Rambam Mishneh Torah, one chapter a day, Nezirot, chapter 6. Halacha 1. When a Nazarite drinks wine, or eats a great product, even if he does so for many days, he does not invalidate even one of the days of his Nazarite vow. Similar principles apply if he shaved a minority of his head, whether intentionally or unintentionally. If, however, the majority of his head was shaved, whether with a razor or through another means which is as effective as a razor, and enough of the hairs to fold over the head to their base were removed, whether intentionally or unintentionally, even if, the th even if thieves shaved his head against his will, 30 days are invalidated. He must wait until he has an uncut mane of hair. Afterwards, he counts the remaining days. Halakha 2. What is implied? A person took a Nazarite vow for 100 days, and after 20 days, the majority of hair was shaved. He must wait 30 days until the hair of his head grows. After 30 days, he counts 80 days to complete his Nazarite vow. Throughout these 30 days, he must observe all the particular Nazarite law, but the days are not counted as part of his Nazarite vow. Halakha 3. When a Nazarite contracted ritual impurity stemming from a corpse, whether intentionally or unintentionally, even if Gentiles caused him to incur impurity against his will, all of the days he observed are invalidated. He must perform the shaving required for impurity, bring the sacrifices associated with arising from impurity, and begin to count the days of his Nazarite vow anew. This is implied by Numbers 6.12, the first days will fall. Even if he becomes impure on the day that he completes his Nazarite vow, at the conclusion of the day, all of the days are invalidated. Halakha 4, if he contracted impurity on the day after he completed his Nazarite vow, i.e. the day on which he would have brought the sacrifices associated with the completion of a Nazarite vow, impurity, uh, had he not bec become impure, he invalidates only 30 days. What should he do? He must bring the sacrifices associated with arising from impurity when he becomes pure and perform the shaving required for, for impurity. He then observes the Nazarite laws for 30 days. He performs the shaving associated with completing a Nazarite vow in purity and brings the appropriate sacrifices. If he contracts ritual impurity after the blood of any of the sacrifices was sprinkled upon him, none of the days are invalidated. Instead, he should bring the remainder of the sacrifices associated with completing an Azrite vow in purity after he regains ritual purity. Halakha 5. If he contracted ritual impurity on the following day, i.e. the day which is fit for him to begin letting his hair grow, had he shaven his hair after the completion of his vow, he does not invalidate anything, even though he did not shave yet, for he has completed his Nazarite vow and everything associated with it. Halakha 6. If he becomes impure on the day he took the Nazarite vow, or on the second day, these days are not invalidated. Instead, he completes the days of his vow, including them, after he brings his sacrifices. This is derived from the proof text cited above. The days will fall. The use of the plural implies that there must be at least two full days. Therefore, if he becomes impure from the third day onward, he invalidates all the previous days. Halakha 7. When a person takes a Nazarite vow, although he is ritually impure due to contact with a corpse, the Nazarite vow takes effect. If he becomes impure again, drinks wine, or shaves his head, he is liable for lashes. If he remains impure for several days, they are not counted for him until he has the ashes of the red heifer sprinkled upon him on, on the third and seventh days. After he contracted ritual impurity and he immerses himself in a mikvah on the seventh day. When a person takes a Nazarite vow, while he is ritually impure, the seventh day 
is counted for him. When by contrast a Nazarite who was richly pure became impure, he should not begin counting until the eighth day. Halakha 8. When a person takes a Nazarite vow in a cemetery, the Nazarite vow takes effect. Even if he remains there for several days, they are not counted for him. He is liable for lashes for remaining there. If he was warned not to take a Nazarite vow while there, he should not shave his hair when he leaves there. If while in the cemetery he contracted impurity in one of the ways which would require a Nazarite to shave, he should neither shave nor bring a sacrifice associated with emerging from impurity. If a Nazarite, Halakha 9, if a Nazarite entered a cemetery in a closed container, chest or closet, made a Nazarite vow there, and then a colleague came and opened the top, causing him to contract ritual impurity, he is not liable for lashes even though he remains there. He does, however, receive stripes for rebellious conduct if he remains there. Halakha 10. When the Nazarite left the cemetery, remained several days outside, and then returned, the days he remained outside are not counted as part of his Nazarite vow. If he departed, had the ashes of the red heifer sprinkled upon him, immersed himself in a mikvah, counted several days of his Nazarite vow, and returned to the cemetery, the day that he counts are significant for him. Even if he enters the cemetery on the eighth day after becoming impure, the seventh day is counted for him. If while there he contracted one of the types of impurity for which a Nazarite is required to shave, he is required to bring a sacrifice as required when emerging from impurity. The days he counted previously are invalidated and he must perform the shaving required when emerging from impurity. Halakha 11. What's the what does the shaving required when emerging from ritual impurity involve? When a Nazarite becomes impure in one of the ways which require him to shave because of it, he must have the ashes of the red heifer sprinkled upon him on the third and seventh days. He then has his hair shaved on the seventh day, and after, after having the ashes sprinkled on him on the seventh day, he immerses in a mikvah, as is required of all those who are ritually impure due to contact with a, cor a human corpse. He waits until sunset and brings his sacrifices on the eighth day. These sacrifices are two turtle doves or two young doves, one as a burnt offering and one as a sin offering, and a year old lamb as a guilt offering. All of the preceding days are invalidated and he begins counting his Nazarite vow anew. If he shaved on the eighth day, he may bring his sacrifices on that day. Halakha 12. When does he begin counting the days of his Nazarite vow? When he brings his sin offering, his burnt offering, and his guilt offering. By contrast, do not hold him back from beginning his counting. Halakha 13. If he had the ashes of the red heifer sprinkled upon him on the third day and the seventh day, but did not immerse himself, but instead delayed his immersion, when he immerses, he should wait until sunset and bring his sacrifices on the following day. If he immersed himself and waited until after sunset, but delayed bringing his sacrifices, he cannot begin counting the days of his vow until he brings his sin offering. His burnt offering and guilt offering do not hold him back from counting, as explained in the previous halakha. Halakha 14. When an Ezraite performs the shaving required after ritual impurity, he does not have to shave at the entrance to the temple or cast his hair on the fire where his sacrifices are being cooked. Whether he shaves outside the temple or inside, it is forbidden to benefit from his hair. It must be buried. If it is burnt, it is forbidden to benefit from its ashes, as is true of the ashes of all forbidden substances that must be buried. When one shaves in the temple, if he casts his hair under the pot where his guilt offering is being cooked, he fulfills his obligation. Halakha 15. 
When a Nazarite becomes impure through contact with a corpse on several occasions, whether he was warned about each individual time or he was not warned about each, indi warned about each individual time, he brings only one set of sacrifices for all the times he became impure. When does the above apply? When he becomes impure a second time, before he brings the sacrifices associated with emerging from impurity the first time, but was delayed for several days after he regained ritual purity from bringing his sin offering and contracted impurity in those days. In such a situation, he only brings one sacrifice. When, however, he contracted impurity, became ritually impure, became ritually pure, and brought his sin offering, should he contract impurity a second time after bringing his, sec his sin offering, he is required to bring a second set of sacrifices, even though he has not brought his guilt offering or his burnt offering. Halakha 16. The following rules apply when a Nazarite performed the shaving required when completing his vow impurity, and afterwards discovered that he had contracted the ritual impurity stemming from contact with a corpse in the midst of the days of his vow. If he became impure due to a source for impurity that was known by others, all of the days of his vow are invalidated. He must bring the sacrifices required when emerging from impurity, perform the shaving required when emerging from impurity, count the days of another Nazarite vow, and bring the sacrifices required when completing his vow in impu impurity. If he became impure due to a source of impurity likened to the depths, he does not invalidate the days he observed. This is a law communicated by the oral tradition. Let's see what depths are. Let's see, Halakha 18. Okay. So we'll come to it. If he discovered, discovered that he was impure, whether from a known source of impurity or a source of impurity likened to the depths, before the blood from one of his sacrifices was sprinkled upon him, all the days are invalidated. If he discovers this after the blood from one of his sacrifices was sprinkled upon him, should this be an unknown source of impurity, it does not invalidate the days, even though he has not performed his shaving yet. Halakha 18. What is meant by impurity likened to the depths? A human corpse which no one, not even one at the end of the world, knows about. The concept of impurity likened to the depths applies only with regard to a person who died naturally, but not to a person who was killed, for the killer knows of the existence of the corpse. Halakha 19. When a corpse is found in open view, this is not considered impurity likened to the depths. If a corpse is found sunk in the earth of a cave while covered with water, this is impurity likened to the depths which is not known. If it is discovered buried in straw or in pebbles, it is impurity likened to the depths. If it is covered in water in the dark or clefts of the rocks, it is not impurity likened to the depths. The following rules apply. Rule applies when a Nazarite who became impure through contact with a corpse goes down to a cave and immerses there. Brings the sacrifices required after emerging from impurity, counts the days of his Nazarite vow, performs the shaving required after completing the vow impurity, and afterwards discovers that there was a corpse sunk in the earth of the cave when he descended to immerse. Although this is an unknown source of impurity, all the days are invalidated. The rationale is that his impurity was an established fact, and hence that condition is presumed to continue until he definitely purified himself. In the above situation, if a Nazarite descended to the pool to cool himself off, he is ritually pure until he has certain knowledge that he touched the corpse. If the corpse is found floating on the water, we presume that the Nazarite is impure. Since the corpse is floating, we operate under the presumption that the Nazarite touched it. <laughs>